Hey folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce for the American Liberty Radio Network. How are ya? That's good. Today, well, today, 16 years ago, changed America and the world. Since then, there have been evidence pouring out just pouring out all over the place that literally has shown what has happened, the exact thing, not the official story from the government. Everything is out there in the open now. Everything that we know, everything that we understand about 9-11 is out there. We know who did it. We can put the puzzle pieces together and see it, if you haven't already. We know the names. We know the places. We know the dates. We know that it took eight years for that whole thing to happen because they planned it from 1993 to 2001. Remember the truck bombing in the World Trade Center 2 in 1993 in the Clinton administration? Took eight years to plan it out, but also took behavioral analysis people to understand how people were going to react. So that was the trial run in 1993. We know and we understand what happened. We know that, well, we know a lot. I won't go down the list of what I have found out since then. But I can tell you what, I can tell you this, and I can I can tell you specifically that everything that you thought was a conspiracy theory is no longer. Everything is out there. It's all the truth. It's all the facts. It's everywhere. And the mainstream propaganda media is still going to try to buffalo you into believing their bull crap. Okay. Just want to send out all sorts of positive energies and positive thoughts to those that were affected by this 16 years ago. So, anywho, just want to start it, start out this podcast with that. The thing that you have to remember or you can remember anything you want, the one thing I'm going to share with you is we as people come together at the worst times of our history. 1989, we had the Northridge Northridge earthquake near San Francisco. People, no matter who they were, came out to help the firemen, came out to help each other. Came out. We are a very helpful group of people. But there are other people out there that take advantage of disasters and try to, you know, do things for themselves. Just recently I saw an article of about people who tried to loot while this hurricane was going on in Florida and it got to the point where everything was, you know, the hurricane was going away and people were looting stores. They were breaking into stores and looting them and they were arrested and that's exactly what you need to do. They need to be arrested and thrown in prison. These are stupid people. These are absolutely stupid people. 9-11, September 11th, 2001, we had stupid people. If you look at what was happening, you had those groups of people out there doing everything they could to take advantage of the situation. And we had government officials being the dumbest people on the face of the planet. 
including the president, George W. Bush. Now, let me ask you all a question. Let's say you are invited to your son or daughter's kindergarten, you know, first grade class. You're invited to read a story to the class. And as you're reading it or getting ready to read it, someone walks in and whispers in your ear something about your family. Are you going to politely, just calmly sit there and do nothing? You've seen that video where Bush sat there in that classroom doing nothing after somebody whispered in his ear. Well, guess what? Doesn't that indicate guilt in some circumstantial way? Does that not force you to think why he's doing this? Because critical thinking is better than believing the official story from the government. I just, uh, I don't know. Speaking of which, something related to that, which came from Westmonster.com, not related to 9-11, but related to something of 9-11. This is the 11th of September, 2017. This is, comes from westmonster.com. ISIS in possession of 11,100 blank Syrian passports. Islamic State terrorists are now in possession of 11,100 blank passports that could be used to hide their identity and help them seek asylum in Europe. It has emerged. Islamic State terrorists are now in possession of these passports. Records from German Federal Criminal Police Office, reportedly seen by Bild newspaper, show ISIS fighters have these documents, meaning sleeper cells of terrorists could already be embedded in mainland Europe. It comes after Der Spiegel Newspaper reported that several dozen Syrian extremists linked to the al-Nasra front and Islamic State terrorist groups who committed, quote, numerous massacres, unquote, uh, of civilians and captives have sought asylum in Germany. Bild claims 8,625 passports checked by German migration authorities in 2016 were fake. Yeah, folks. ISIS are known to be trying to sneak in terrorists among genuine refugees and asylum seekers. It happened at the Paris attacks and also in the Berlin Christmas market atrocity. Now they're in possession of blank passports, which makes their job a lot easier. Why on earth is the EU not doing more to secure its borders? They're putting people's lives at risk simply because they refuse to admit that their open border experiment has failed. This is going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. I don't really give one rip what people's opinions are about what happened on 9-11. Because when it first happened, I'll just say this. At one point, I was watching the news because at the time, my fiancé called me, told me to turn on the news. So I turned on the news. And I saw what happened. And I watched it until the second plane hit the tower. Now, let me... Let me say this. A lot. Uh, there are some people, I was going to say a lot, but it's not. There are some people who claim 
that there were no planes. John Lear, who's uh, part of the Lear Jet Corporation company, said that there is absolutely no way those jets could ever get that low to the ground. He's a pilot. He should know. Now, I've seen tests on jets that big. I've I've seen documented video footage of and film footage of jets that big getting close to the ground without anything in front of it, without, you know, all of this big giant field. So I'm thinking, can they get close to the ground? But some people say there were no planes. Dr. Judy Wood is saying that it was a direct energy weapon that took down the buildings and that there were no planes involved. Or, I shouldn't say that, because that was me saying that, that there were no planes involved. If you go to drjudywood.com, you'll find out more. The thing that really has me scratching my head is why are people saying there were no planes? Now, you've seen that video footage where that plane's wing went behind the building and then, you know, crashed into the World Trade Center. And people are saying it was a hologram. Okay. (laughs) I would rather, my point is, is I would rather believe the architects of architects and engineering for 9-11 truth than I would some Joe Schmo with, you know, in his basement putting together a video. I would rather believe the engineers who work on the planes. I would rather believe that the pilots that tell me that it's impossible for a plane in that type of environment with buildings and wind and all of that to get close to the ground. I would, you know, I were there planes? Of course there were. This is why I said I don't give a rip what people's opinion is about it because unless you operate with critical thinking and look beyond the quote unquote official story, you're never going to know. And if you're going to, you know, keep ignoring and denying and doing, then just go away. Just go away. I'm not even going to pay attention to your opinions about it. Water folks. I'm drinking water. Um, and speaking of passports from uh, from that article I read, it's up on American Liberty Radio podcast. How can a passport allegedly, you know, possessed by one of the hijackers that, you know, where the plane hit the building, how can a passport be unscathed, on the ground, at a very convenient location after the buildings fell down. Okay. Combination of things happened that day. Planes hit the building and at the same time a controlled demolition. Look at the video very closely. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are not lying, period. Just look at it. Can I say that 9-11 was an inside job? Yes. Took them eight years to plan it. Took them, in 1993, uh, a test run of a truck bomb to see how it could be done or if it could be done that way. And there's a whole thing about that. The guy was set up as a patsy. He's Middle Eastern. The FBI and CIA come to him and say, 
uh, we're going to fake this. But on the day that, and he said this in his testimony, on the day that it happened, they gave him the real stuff. So I don't want to hear your opinion about it. I know the truth. I know the facts. Get them. You'll be or won't be too surprised. Let's move on to something else, shall we? Steve Bannon, the Russia investigation is a waste of time. There's nothing to the Russian investigation. Special counsel Robert Mueller is conducting a wide-ranging investigation in Russia's meddling in presidential campaign. The probe is looking at whether there was any collusion between the Trump camp and the Kremlin, as well as whether Russian government operatives attempted to infiltrate the campaign. Steve Bannon, who joined the Trump team last August after leaving Breitbart News, indicated in the interview that not only does he not believe the collusion allegation, but also that he's not so sure that Russia attempted to influence the outcome of the election at all. In other words, it never happened, folks. That's going up on a on American Liberty Radio podcast. Excuse me. The things, the things that we want to know are out there. My question is, why are you ignoring it? No, bottom line is you're ignoring everything. You're ignoring every important factor as to how this government works, why they would do what they do, and why would they do anything against their own citizens. Have you looked at the Roman Empire and the history of the Roman Empire? It started out as a Roman Republic, but somewhere along the line, corruption and all of that, it became a Roman Empire. Have you even looked at why those wars were started? Hmm. Interesting, huh? There's always going to be a detractor. There's always going to be someone that says that you're wrong. There's always going to be someone who is going to create an opposite narrative than you have. Always. Won't matter. Won't matter what the subject matter is. It won't matter what the issues are. There's always going to be someone that's going to create a negative, um, you know, a, 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 a negative opposition to your positive truth. I I can say it that way. The narrative from the opposite side, which is 9-11 was, you know, uh, 9-11 had hijackers and, you know, and they're the ones that believe the official story. No, uh uh-uh. There's always going to be opposition to that. There's always going to be some sort of conflict that is going to cause these people to start yelling and shouting and and, and just really doing everything. Throwing a tantrum is what they're going to be doing because, number one, they don't like the truth or the facts. They, They hate truth. They hate facts. These people that believe the official story, they hate the truth and the facts. Or... Worse, they're paid to lie. Okay, so, you know, so you have that. And when you look at the very, you look at the very nature of these people, you look at the very, uh, you look at how these people function. <laughs> Just look at how these people function. And then you tell me whether or not they're smart enough to be able to tie their own shoes. You know, I I just... I just, I, I don't know... 
That's why I said I don't really care what others' opinions are about 9-11. I really, really don't. And I will not entertain someone sitting down with me and saying, well, I've got the truth, and I know it, and here it is, and this is what it is, and yada, yada, yada. You know what? Go away. I just, I'm, and, and, and here's why, and let me just fill you in on a, a couple of things. Here's why I don't want to even sit down with those people is because they don't have the truth. They cannot and will not even use critical thinking in their own material to be able to at least have a decent discussion about it. That's why I just, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand why these people are even believing the quote unquote official story. I really don't. Because I know they're smart enough to think beyond the, you know, and, and to rip away the veil and see who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. I, I, I can see that. I mean, but, uh, you know. Anyway. Let's move on, shall we? Twitchy. Remember that website? Twitchy. I don't even know what it is. I've never been there. Twitchy.com is reporting on yesterday, reported yesterday on the 10th of September 2017. No wonder Hillary's book is so thick. Now she's blaming the godforsaken electoral college. Quote, I was up against the Russian intelligence apparatus, a misguided FBI director, and now the godforsaken electoral college, unquote. Oh, God. I'm not even going to go there because I will take the next segment and just rant about her. I just, I, I just, I'm done. I'm done with, uh, as she said about her political career, I'm done. Uh, yeah, she said she's not going to campaign. She's done. You know, she's, she's, <laughs> So, you know, I, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, sure, Hillary, yeah, right, you're done, yeah. And I'm the freaking tooth fairy, okay. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, she's done. She politically speaking, she is done. Uh, she says she's not going to campaign, but she still wants to stay in politics. Yeah. Okay, for some. Strange reason that's not giving me the preview picture of that, but it is. The link is on American Liberty Radio podcast, so it's not giving me the picture, so I don't know why. But anyway, that's twitchy.com. It's on infowars.com. Bitter Hillary says, quote, should keep your cool, unquote, seconds after yelling about Trump. Quote, it was so just discombobulating, discombobulating, I don't know, uh, is that a word? <laughs> I don't know, enough about Hillary, she's a, she's a criminal, that's all there is to it. I'm not even going to, there, there's a lot of stuff here that I'm looking at on this page that I am not even going to get into because, yeah. Is Kid Rock running for Senate? Hmm. We need some actual people in there that know what they're doing, number one. We need everyday regular people, you know, who do what they do to run. But, um, here's the dumbest thing that California could ever do. And it's a video Sacramento, California. Sacramento's bizarre new taxpayer-funded initiative pays gang members such as Bloods or Crips not to commit crimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding you, folks. This I this I'm not kidding you. This is going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. Do you see how stupid California truly is? Do you understand that? Do you see this? 
Is this, is this something that is clear to you now? California is completely done. It has been turned over uh, to the, uh, you know, to, to the elites, to the controllers of Washington, D.C. It's been handed over to them by, you know, dictator Jerry Brown. And California is done. California is history. There is absolutely no reason why people should even be staying there. And, you know, there are nice places. I'm not saying that. But the whole political structure of California is kaput, as my aunt would tell me. My aunt was uh, German. She was born and raised in Germany. Uh, And, yeah, so California is just completely done. There is absolutely no political structure in that state that is ever going to be any good to the citizens. And besides that, there's legislation uh, being proposed that will split California in three. So why are you people even in California? My friends and family, my cousins, my distant relatives that are still in California, my brother, sister, and uh, sister-in-law, all that. Let me just gear this next statement to you folks. I love you guys. You know that. So I'm trying to save your ass. Move out of California. Move. Don't even sit there to try to, you know, whatever. It's California is done. There's enough libtards there to gather a small army to go against people that are wanting peace, freedom, liberty, and security for California. But I don't know how many Californians have the guts to stand up to them. So let's cut your losses, family and friends. Pack your crap and get the hell out of California. And if you've got ties there and if you've got, you know, if you're you're rooted there in your job, whatever, whatever it is you do, think about that and, you know, think about how you can take care of yourself. And move. Get out of California. I'm serious. In 2006, when I finally just decided I'm out. Actually, it was 2003. But when I I thought to myself, I'm out of here. And I left California for good. I didn't look back. Because from 1977, 78... To 2006, I kept bouncing back and forth between Stockton and Reno, Nevada. I realized, number one, California is toast. I realized this after 9-11. Toast. Just complete. California's shot. It's just don't even. It's done. It's done. So when I left in 2006, I never looked back. And I le- in Reno, Nevada, Nevada itself, Governor Brian Sandoval is doing exactly, or he is stepping in the same footprints as Governor Brown. So look for Nevada to fall here within the next two, three years, or even sooner. So when I left Nevada and I saw the writing on the wall there, me and my better half left and came up here to Montana. And guess what? Um, there's political strife up here too as well. I, you know, <clears throat> of course, you know, Zinke and Bullock and all those, they're all in campaign mode right now because they know there's all sorts of advertising on YouTube and, and such. You know, they're in, they're trying to, you know, they're, they're 2018 is going to be here, you know, sooner than you think. So they're in campaign mode. <laughs> so anyway, so get the hell out family, leave. Bye-bye. Uh, get out of California, go somewhere. Cause you know, you really have to. So I'll be back in two minutes and 39 seconds. This is American Liberty Radio Network, American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com.
Greetings, this is John LeBang of The John LeBang Show, and you're listening to the American Liberty Radio Network. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about late night in the Midlands.com. Become a member and be informed. <laughs> Growing up terrestrial radio. The future is here. Destroying the liberal media one truth bomb at a time. Independent media is shattering the liberal national security media into a million pieces. Their views of the world are based on the script the government gives them. Independent media seeks out and finds the truth and reports on what is truly going on behind the scenes. Support the truth and facts. Support independent media. Hey, folks. How you doing? The 11th of September, 2017. This is American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.weebly.com Yeah, folks. <clears throat> 16 years ago, changed everything. 16 years ago changed a lot, okay, changed a lot. Now, the question that I have is if we are in the situation that we are in now because of that, Does that show that there are too many people believing the official story? Hmm. Interesting. That's just a question that you need to answer yourself. Let me, um, there's a, couple of articles I'm going to read here. RT is reporting on the 8th of September 2017. Agency moves ahead with quote-unquote transparent prototypes for Trump's border wall. Eight prototypes will be built in San Diego. Four U.S. companies won contracts for prototypes for the U.S.-Mexico border wall. The terms call for a see-through barrier up to 30 feet. 30 feet high, using materials other than concrete, announcing the con- uh, announcing the contracts on Thursday. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection said they will meet with four vendors to decide on a timeline, but expect the prototypes to be constructed in the fall. We're close to that. Wall prototypes will be built between 18 to 30 feet high, made of materials other than concrete, and will be judged on their robust physical characteristics for deterring illegal crossings. The new materials, which must be see-through, will be evaluated 
by CBP for their potential to complement the current wall and barriers along the southern border. There are no details on what other materials companies had suggested for their prototypes. Quote, unfortunately, those designs are not available to pu- for public distribution. Unquote. Carlos Diaz, uh, Southwest Border Branch Chief of CBP, told RT via email, quote, the construction of prototypes is still part of an active procurement process, and we're limited in regards to what we share at this point, unquote. Yeah. Because I've read that, it's going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. I find it odd. I find it odd that people don't want a wall. Hmm, interesting. These are the same people that believe the official story of the government about 9-11. And you parents out there need to be fully aware of this. Freebeacon.com is reporting on this. Freebeacon.com. This is on Infowars.com. Feds spend. Get this, folks. Parents, hey, listen up. Knock, knock. You home? Hey, listen up. Feds spend $138,000 asking four-year-olds about their, quote, internal sense of gender identity, unquote. Study to ask preschoolers what gender toys they play with. Elizabeth Harrington, FreeBeacon.com, 8th of September, 2017. A grant for a two-year study was awarded to the University of Washington this summer. The project, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) excuse me, wow, (sighs) let me take two on that one. A grant for a two-year study, two years, folks, was awarded to the University of Washington this summer. The project will interview 250 children aged 4 to 6 and their parents asking a series of questions about quote-unquote gendered behavior. I'm just going to leave that right there, folks. I'm not even going to read anymore because you parents out there need to be fully aware of what is going on. Uh, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you know what is going on. I'm sure you protect your children with your whole entire being. And that's honorable. Thank you for protecting your children. I had stepchildren for a while. I can tell you it's tough. But I also helped, you know, and was around my nieces and other other you know, parents and their kids. and So, yeah, I, I get it, folks. I get it. So what's your view on that? Do you want your four-year-old, six-year-old being asked questions? Do you want to be in the same room being asked questions about gendered behavior? Because to me... And this is only me. I I don't. To me, I think that's wrong. To me, I don't think children of that age even know. I I don't even think this. Why are they doing this? I my opinion of that is why are they doing this is that they want to make everybody equal. It doesn't matter if you were born a female or a male. You're all going to be equal in the eyes of who or whom. The government and their people or some shadow government which operates or, you know, whatever, you know. Is everybody going to be genderless in terms of identification? Or is there some other agenda involved in questioning children about 
you know, four year old, six year old about gender behavior or gender identity is what it was. Is there some sort of agenda in there? Okay. Parents, you need to be fully aware of what's going on. The Democrats have lost their way and continue towards obscurity as they abandon the American people and shift further and further left. Owen Schroyer, Infowars.com. This is going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. I oftentimes, and, and, and it's amazing to me, that I would ever get to the point of realizing that the political parties in America don't matter. I never thought I would ever get to that point, even though I've been researching all of this, <clears throat> even though I, even though I didn't register to vote till I was 29. Uh huh. In terms of what it was then, and this was back when Clinton was running for president. And the hype of him being former, you know, governor of uh, Arkansas and all this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, you know, you look at the hype that's involved. And I thought, you know what, yeah, it, it, uh, it would be a good idea for me to register to vote. So I registered, uh, believe it or not, as a Democrat because my mom and dad were hardcore Democrats. So keep it in the family. Then I realized something was not quite right, and I began to do a little more research on those parties. This is when I began to really get into deep research of political parties in, in the United States, even though I knew all sorts of stuff from 1977 to 19, you know, 92. And uh, I knew all this stuff. I knew, you know, what was going on and all this. And then I got into, when I registered to vote, I got into really digging into the parties themselves. Well, when I realized... <laughs> Um, when I realized what the Democratic Party was and is and where it came from and how it grew, and that's all I was concentrating on at that time, I went, screw this. You know, a couple of years later, you know, uh, I registered as a Republican, and then I dug deep, 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 deep into that. Why didn't I do that before? I don't know. But I dug deep into those, and I went, now I know who these people are. And <laughs> and then when the next uh, presidential campaign came up, which was George H. W. Bush, or was it not even the no it was George W. Bush? Yeah, George W. When W. ran for president, that's when I registered as a nonpartisan. I registered nonpartisan and I found very few independent nonpartisan candidates. And I say that because they weren't out in the general public. They weren't, you know, really that known. And it was more regional than it was national. So, and that was back then. Now it's like exploding everywhere. And uh, still, you don't get the debates with these independent nonpartisan candidates, but if you did, you'd see what America, what America is all about because these people come from the streets. They come from businesses. They know they're in the trenches. But then again, in 2012, in 2012 was the last time I voted, and I will not vote ever again. I won't. And I just refuse to even entertain the thought of voting. 
because it is a sham. It's a scam. Uh, it literally does nothing but, well, let's just say it causes division in one way or another. You, you and your family can be on opposite sides of the table and it will cause division. The voting will cause division. And regardless of whether or not you're going to tolerate your family member or friend, you're still divided. And this is where you get this. This is where you get this understanding of politics and religion are things you don't talk about. And guess what? My mom said the same thing to me. Religion and politics should stay private. And I looked right at her and I said, well, how are we ever going to discuss the issues and get from this point to the next? She had nothing to say to that. Absolutely nothing. She knew I was right. She knew I was right. There was nothing that you can do to... There's nothing that you can agree upon with the other person who is vehemently against everything that you do. There is nothing you're going to be able to agree upon, period. You're done. Now you know why I don't really care about other people's opinions. About certain things in politics. I care what people have to say about, you know how this works and how that works and all this i that 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 part of it is okay but when they start when other people who know me start saying that i'm wrong that i'm not looking at everything that you don't know the whole issues and all of this when they start saying stuff like that that gets into a debate which i'm okay with except for the fact that about 99.9% of what they're saying is nothing but Opinion based on nothing. Because I can put all the information I have in front of me and say, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Let's see what what's your you know view on this. They have nothing. And when I say I don't care about other people's opinion, I don't care about that on in regards to the fact of the information they have because they have none. They don't have any factual information to debate me. I don't, I don't know everything, but I know enough to know that I can bring it to the table and we can discuss it. But other people's opinion about whatever it is I'm bringing to the table is something I don't care about. Unless they bring theirs to the table. Then we can have a decent discussion. And not really a debate. We can just talk about the stuff. (laughs) <laughs> you know, we can just, there it is. That's, here, here is what it is. So unless you have the ability to bring your information to the metaphorical table of debate with me, don't bother even saying anything to me because I'm not even going to listen. You know, because it's pointless. Why am I going to waste my time? Ask yourself this question. Here's a question that you need to ask yourself. I don't need an answer to it unless you want to give it to me. But ask yourself this question. If somebody disagrees with you, number one, why? Number two, what are they saying? And number three, do they have any evidence, any proof, any information that they're going to share to tell you why they disagree with you? There you go. And I've spent way too much time on that. So let me get to my other article here that I saw. I think I got time for one more, maybe two, who knows. Here's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I heard this yesterday, but and and I heard about this yesterday. This is from the Washington Examiner, 9th of September 2017. A Democratic Congressman said, quote, we'll shut down government if DREAM Act fails, unquote. Majority of parties support shutting down government in this event. Representative 
Louis Gutierrez, Democrat of Illinois, said he and other liberal House Democrats are prepared to support a government shutdown if House members fail to pass the DREAM Act and protect hundreds of thousands of young illegal immigrants from being deported. Quote, we have a Democratic caucus where I know the vast majority of the members of the Democratic caucus are ready to say, uh, quote, if there is no pathway forward, not only for the 800,000 and for visas for uh, all of you, but also for the rest of the uh, immigrant youth through the DREAM Act, then there is no government for anyone, unquote, unquote. Guterres said during a press conference with the United We Dream Advocacy Group, quote, we will shut it down and let the Republicans keep it open with their own votes, unquote. That's about DACA. Okay. Okay. United We Dream Advocacy Group. That's an open borders group, by the way, folks. Completely open borders. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not even going <laughs> to... Here, let me do this. Let me highlight this and, and go look for it. Startpage.com, searching We Dream, United We Dream, About Us. Let me, let me hit the About Us link. <clears throat> United We Dream is the largest immigrant youth-led organization in the nation. Our powerful nonpartisan network is made up of over 100,000 immigrant youth and allies and 55 affiliated organizations in 26 states. We organize and advocate for the dignity and fair treatment of immigrant youth and families regardless of immigration status. Hold on to that. Last four words, regardless of immigration status. I'm going to put that up on American Liberty Radio Network, and you can click through the links to find out more. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to put it this way, and I know it's going to piss some people off, but there's the door. Bye. Have a nice day. Close the damn borders. I don't give one freaking rip what you think. Close the damn borders. Okay? We need to get the United States of America back up and running or or let's put it this way, we need to have it survive on its own instead of using life support. And we need to make it happen today. Closing the borders will allow for that. When I say close the borders, I'm not talking about isolationism. I'm talking about closing the borders and telling the other countries, and I don't give one rip what country it is, you're not sending any more people over here. Your, your people are completely banned from the United States until we can get our house in order over here. Just we're shutting down the borders. Immigration is closed. All of it. Now, what about the people here? Well, that's a good question. People have come here in the last year or so. What about them? They need to go. They need to go. I don't give one rip about what they want because here's the thing if you're not if you yourself personally are not able to support someone else within your family if two or three other your family members come to your house and you're you're you've got you know two kids and a wife and yourself to take care of but two of your family members come and say well we need help and we'd like to stay here and after a while it's going to drain your resources is it not there you go. They got to go. I'm not racist or prejudiced. I'm logical. I'm logical. Look at the US debt clock US debt clock.org if I can talk. Let's go over there, shall we? US debt clock.org. 19 trillion dollars. We're 20 No, we're what are we? 22 billion dollars away 22 billion dollars away of being 20 trillion dollars in debt okay 
$22 billion. We'll rack that up by the end of the year. Okay? The United States of America. We're $19 trillion. $978 billion in debt. Okay? We cannot afford to take, any, take in any more immigrants, period. The U.S. gross domestic product is $19,322,000,000,000. Hello? <laughs> um, do the math, folks. There it is, usdebtclock.org. Go look at it yourself. And as a matter of fact, I'll put the link on American Liberty Radio Podcast. We cannot handle any of this. And by the way, who the hell we owe this money to? We don't owe this money. Look at Iceland. Look at what happened to Iceland. The EU came in and said, You're gonna, you owe us this much money, blah, blah, blah. And the Iceland politicians, the ones, well, the people themselves, said, wait, 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 we don't owe anything. And a small group of people got together in a committee and, and, uh, and, and some of the politicians who were against the EU taking over Iceland came to this group and went, okay, we've got to do this. They went back and (laughs) took their legal process and used it against those EU members and the corrupt bankers and the corrupt politicians and arrested and fired each and every single one of them, sent the EU packing, and now look, seven years later, or whatever, almost 10 years later now, Iceland is doing pretty darn good. That's what we need to do in the United States of America. Arrest every single corrupt politician and corrupt banker. We need, and it's going to take a while. I mean, we can do it overnight, but or almost overnight, but it's going to take a while. We need to arrest them, throw their asses in prison, send them off to Guantanamo. I don't care. We need to get these people out of government. And we need to repeal the Act of 1871 to cut all of them off and to cut off all their resources and... Stop them from destroying the United States of America. That's just the way it is. So on this 16th anniversary of what happened on September 11, 2001, we need to, I'm going to say this, I used to talk about defense and I still do believe in the defense of the United States of America against enemies foreign and domestic, And we need to adhere to that. But there comes a time when you got to fight for what you believe. And when I say fight, I'm talking taking it to the streets, taking it to the city council meetings, taking it to the county board of supervisors meetings, open to the public. That's what I'm talking about. And we need to do what we need to do. That's just the way it is. And if you don't, want to do that, what the hell are you doing in the U.S.? I'm just asking. Folks, an hour goes by way too quick. And if you have anything that you want to tell me, please do go to American Liberty Radio Podcast on Facebook and drop in a comment there. Or if you want to make it more private so you can send a... uh, Excuse me. If you want to make it more private, there we go. You can send me an email at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. And on that note, if you want to support the American Liberty Radio Network, you can go to the sponsors page on the website at American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com. Okay. AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com. Go to the sponsors page. Everything is right there. You got a couple of links for a PayPal and become a patron, too. You can drop a dollar a dollar right there and be, to become a patron and help me keep the lights on around here. Folks, I'm out of here. AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com is the website. American Liberty Radio Network, sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS.